All right, so now in this chapter, we're going to finally start talking about the electronic structure of the hydrogen atom, which is the first chemical system, fully chemical system, that we'll be able to find the complete solution of the wave function to. Two basic parts to the hydrogen atom. There is there's a big heavy proton that we'll call Rp for proton, and then there's the small light electron. Okay, and we're going to start by writing out the positions of these things. Right, so the position of the proton and the electron are both vectors that can be in three-dimensional space, so they have hats. Okay, now, and just like we did for the introduction to the harmonic oscillator problem, given these two vectors, we can actually define two related coordinate systems. So one is the relative coordinate, which is the dif difference between these two centers. And this we're just going to call r, little r. And next we're going to call big R, which is the center of mass coordinate. And the center of mass coordinate will be, because the proton is so much heavier than the electron, it will end up being pretty close to the proton, almost exactly next, or almost right on top of the proton itself. And in fact, for the hydrogen atom in particular, because this proton is so much heavier than the electron, right, so the mass of a proton divided by the mass of an electron is somewhere around 1836, right? So this is almost 2,000 times heavier. It means that to a very, very good approximation, we can imagine that this proton is just fixed in space. And then we just solve for the electronic energy or the electronic wave function of the electron floating around this fixed proton. So that will help us simplify this problem a lot. But it's also in the same spirit of this idea of the relative coordinate here, right? So now we're explicitly dealing with the relative coordinate. But because the proton is so much heavier than the electron, the relative coordinate way of looking at things ends up looking like you have a proton just sitting fixed in space at the origin. And so that's the model we're going to start with. Okay, so in that model, we have our Hamiltonian will have two terms. So we'll have the kinetic energy, which will have the normal form, but we'll get to what that looks like. And then we have a potential energy. And the potential energy is the potential energy between a negatively charged particle and a positively charged particle, both with the same absolute magnitude of, of the charge. So this is a Coulomb interaction between these two. Uh, and to be more precise, it takes the following forms. You have, so it's V, of x, y, z, and this is equal to minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r, where as a reminder, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, so in this, this little e is the charge of an electron or the charge of a proton. It's the fundamental unit of charge, which are both the same for electrons and protons. So it's a minus sign because this is an attractive potential. A positive proton and a negative electron have an attraction. And so the energy that you get for this process is negative. And then this 4 pi epsilon naught over r is, is part of the Coulomb force, it's part of writing out the Coulomb force in SI units. So this epsilon naught is called the permittivity or the vacuum permittivity. And this is uh, just basically, real, it, this is how you convert the charges and a distance into an energy. Okay, so right away you can see that the Coulomb potential only depends on the distance between the two particles. Okay, so this is, this R here will be the distance between the proton and the electron. And so because we already have this in a form where this only depends on this distance, and it doesn't have any particularly interesting x, y, or z dependence separately, that tells us right away that this will be more convenient to try to solve this problem in spherical coordinates, because potential energy has no dependence on two of the three coordinates in spherical coordinates. And so this will really simplify everything that we do. Okay, so the full Hamiltonian then is h is equal to minus h bar squared over 2 me, this me is the mass of the electron, and then del squared, 
and then it's this minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Okay, so this is the Hamiltonian. This is everything that we need to know in order to find the allowed energy states for the hydrogen atom. Now this is in the form of what's known as a central potential. And a central potential like this just means any potential that only depends on the distance here and not on any of the angular components. And for any central potential, it'll be a lot easier to then work instead in spherical coordinates. So now let's move this, uh, write this out explicitly in spherical coordinates. So this is equal to minus h bar squared over 2me. And now we have to write out the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Okay, so that is the Laplacian, and then we just have the minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Okay, but if we remember back to the Anglo spectroscopy chapter, then all of this, all these highlighted parts here, if you add them all up, then what you will get is L squared. Okay, so what this means is that we can simplify this a little bit more. And we'll write this as So now let's talk about each of these terms individually. The first term is a, what looks like a radial kinetic energy. The second term includes the angular momentum squared, but it still has some R dependence, so this doesn't cleanly separate as L and R. And then the last term is our potential term. This is the Hamiltonian that we're going to work with in order to find the eigenstates and the eigenenergies of the hydrogen atom. We'll get started with that in the next video.